So this third eye is to be penetrated through or we have to enter into the third eye <coughs> through Kundalini Avati. But it is such a closed passage, it is the door to the limbic area which is the kingdom of God. That anybody who tries to push their attention through this closed door either goes to the left or to the right. And this is the beginning of the trouble of the people when they don't understand that whatever is unknown is not God, is not divine. So, when they move on the right side, <coughs> they go to the supraconscious area. And they start seeing hallucinations. Actually, these are not hallucinations, but actual things, because they exist on the right hand side. So, they start seeing things of the right hand side. They may see colors and <coughs> the formation of colors. And they may see also people <coughs> who are dead, who have been very uh, egoistical. Uh, they can see <coughs> Gandharvas and Kinaras because they go to the Gandharvalo, to the right side, <coughs> and start seeing those things in the unknown awareness of supra consciousness. But that movement is very dangerous. Because if anybody catches you there, then you get an added personality sitting on your head. And you get possessed by ego. And you become on your own. <coughs> and you actually become malignant. Hitler is one of the examples of that. He learned this from the Tibetan Lamas how to go to the supraconscious. And when he learnt it from them, he used it and made many people supraconscious ego it. You must have heard about the Lama system, which was another big problem, was to... <coughs> they knew who is going... the future part, who is going to be the next Lama, where you will find him where you will get him. All the future things they knew and people thought this was divine. To know future is not divine. It's an area which we should never go to because it's an imbalance. We are human beings and we have to know the present and not the future. Once you go through the present stage, then you reach a height from where you can see the past, the present and the future. Supposing on the Mother Earth, if you have a means of going higher and hang yourself there, then you can see whatever has passed through and you can also see what is, is going to come and wherever you are, you are in the present. In the same way, when a person ascends in reality, in, pre in the present, he goes at this point in the super-consciousness from where he says, sees his supraconscious right side and also he can see his subconscious but he has no interest. He wants to rise in the present. <coughs> and this is what actually the Kundalini awakening is. So all those people who say that Kundalini, in the awakening of the Kundalini, it is very difficult and it is harmful, are the people who have no right to awaken the Kundalini. So when they try to play tricks, actually the sympathetic nervous system goes into great agitation. And this sympathetic system on the left and right side start extracting more energy from the central part. So much so that it gets exhausted and such a person becomes 
actually a mental wreck. So many people who said that we are raising your Kundalini by this method or that method wreck the life of the sadhakas. Ultimately they are left high and dry without achieving anything. Nobody knows what to achieve and what to receive. So they are misled. But <coughs> logically one must understand that at least your health should be all right, mentally you should be better off, your temperament has to improve minimum of minimum. But if you are losing all your money to the Guru, you are losing all your health for these nonsensical experiences and you have no control over yourself, then you must know that this is not in any way the reality. Reality is where you are in control. If you are in the control of something else, then you are a lost case. For example, some people start jumping and they say, Mother, I start jumping automatically. That's a serious affair. That means you have no control over yourself. You are just jumping because somebody is making you jump. You are not jumping, that means your own chetana, your own attention, your own awareness is under the control of somebody else. You cannot control yourself. So all these experiences in which people think they are flying in the air or they are having a, I don't know what they call in English language, uh, extraterrestrial movement and people are going in the air and seeing things. All these are very dangerous things. Such a person may ultimately become a lunatic, absolutely, because he loses complete control over himself. These are called as parapsychological experiments in, in America. Give it a big name, parapsychology. Of course, it is para because it is beyond the psyche of a person, but it's very dangerous. You are not supposed to get into these muddles where the spirits capture you and you start behaving in a manner that you can't explain. Uh, <clears throat> once uh, about, I think, five, six years back or maybe more, no, about twelve years back, a group of Americans came to see me and they told me that you must teach us how to fly in the air. I said, why aren't you flying? They said, no, we want to have that uh, space travel. I said, why? Because Americans are doing experiments parapsychology and we want to do the same. I said, they'll all get possessed and they will finish off. I do want to do the same thing as our Ameri uh, Russians are doing. If they come to me, I'll tell them the same thing. So they said, no, no, we must learn. I said, if I tell you that you become slaves of those spirits and then you cannot do anything of your own and you start shaking your body all the time, despite that they said, yes, we must do it. And when they told me that because Americans are, uh, Russians are doing it, we want to do it, I said, who sent you here? So they told me a name of a gentleman who is a journalist in Bombay. I said, this fellow used to suffer from this trouble used to leave his body, go into another world, see this and see that, who suffered so much and he was losing complete control over himself and I cured him. So does he think I can put back the disease in you? I cured him of this disease and why do you want to get into this disease? But they were quite sure that they wanted it. And I discovered later on they are having this parapsychology business in America which is an extremely dangerous thing. So this is the movement, not crossing the agya, but moving, floating on the left or the right, whether you go to the subconscious or to the supraconscious. Effects may be different, but it's the same thing to Sahaja Yoga. The people who go to the subconscious area may start seeing me also in different forms, like the people uh, who take LSD who can't see me, they just see lights coming out of me. And those who go to the, supra uh, to the subconscious area, they start seeing forms and things in such a manner uh, that they think they, are, they have reached heavens. 
but they are seeing the past of evolution, past of everything. So this supraconscious business is very dangerous, no doubt, but also the subconscious is very dangerous because all incurable diseases like cancer, malitis and all that come from the movement of the attention to the left side. So one should be very careful before going to any one of these tantrikas or to these people who are trying to control you or trying to tell you something about the future or the past. There is no need to know about the future or the past. What is the need? How does it help? Actually, if I start telling you how I came all the way from there and how I was held by the jam or anything, will you be interested? How do you get interested in your past glory or past life which was of no value at all today? But it is a human weakness that he wants to add to his personality something that is extremely artificial, non-existent and of no value. And then he says that, yeah, I did this, I did this, I happened to do this, I never got it. In India, people normally go more to the left side with this agya because they say worship God. <clears throat> now if they have to worship God, they have no connection with God. See, now I had no connection here. I could not speak to you. So without connection to God, they start worshipping God. Then they'll sing all kinds of artis, fasting, this, torturing their own lives, this left-sided people, and singing the praise, all these things, going to the extreme 24 hours, they are like that. So somebody sucks them into the left side. If they go on saying Rama, 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 like that, I might say that Valmiki was to told to say, but who told him? Was Narada. Narada is an incarnation. Narada, you are not Narada. So how can you tell yourself or then anybody can tell you, take this name, you take any name. You cannot go to God. So where do you go? You go somewhere. There may be a servant called Rama. He might capture you. And people start behaving in such a funny manner that they look like mad, insipid people. Same thing about supraconscious. People who are very ambitious, they too can get into such a mad condition where they do not think of the collectivity, of the whole, but they just start thinking about themselves. And when such a situation comes in, it's impossible to convince them that they are wrong till they reach their Waterloo and finish off. So this Agya Chakra is a gate, is the door of heaven. And everyone has to pass through it. Now on this chakra resides the great incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> 